What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to your official match review. It's Chelsea 3, Rennes 0, it's another 3 points on the board for us in the Champions League group stage. And it was nearly going to be another 6 pointer for us because of Krasnodar being 2-0 up over Sevilla, but they decided to go all Spursy and bottle it, so it's still kind of all to play for. But the game fell in our hands, it was pretty easy for us at the end of it, especially with the 2 penalties, which we are going to delve into in this game. Because I know a lot of people are going to talk about the second penalty and how, oh, it's bullshit and everything like that. But I don't care because we've had so many other VAR decisions go against us. It's about time we had some jamminess go our way for once. But yeah, before I start this video, if you guys haven't done, sorry, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like and subscribe button. Hit that bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content. And yeah, let's go straight into this review. We're going to start off with a lineup. We started off with the same goalkeeper as usual, Edouard Mendy and goal on the same back four in defence, which we had wanted to see as well because we wanted to see Frank Lampard finally stick to a select back four and not keep rotating because we want some chemistry within the back four. So it's good to see the same back four starting again. Jorginho started in the pivot next to Kante and Mason Mount. We had no Kai Havertz because he's been taken out for two weeks with the virus, which... Again, I do send all my wishes to Kai Havertz. Get well soon. I do think he will get well soon with the recovery rate for this virus. I do think he'll be back fighting within the next two weeks. And in the case of Chelsea, it's not even too bad for us. The international breaks come at the perfect time. He does just miss an international break. He does come back fresh and fit. And yeah, just get well soon, Kai Havertz. I do think it will be fine and straightforward for him. So there's nothing too much to worry about. The good thing with us, we also have depth in midfield as well, so it's not like all panic stations and everything like that. We're, we're all going to be fine. Front three as well. We went for Tammy Abraham up front, Timo Werner on the left, and Hakim Ziyech, the same three that played against Burnley. And a lot of people were thinking, why didn't Hudson Doy start? And to be honest, I was thinking the same thing as well. But realistically, Callum Hudson Doy hasn't really taken much of his chances either. I don't think he's looked that confident when he's been on the ball. I don't think he's actually had much of an impact in games. He had the goal against Krasadar, but it was a massive goalkeeping error. So I kind of understand going for Timo Werner on the left instead. And but the way the game went out was perfect anyway, because within the first 10-15 min minutes, he got a penalty. There was slight contact, but there was contact. Timo Werner's pace makes it very easy to take him down, especially when he accelerates so quickly, which is what defenders have to be worried about. But he got caught out. First yellow card for for him. Timo Werner stepped up to take the penalty. It wasn't Jorginho this time. And he smashed it into the back of the net. He might be our main penalty taker for now. And out of Jorginho and Timo Werner, I don't mind. They're, two, they're, they're, they're both two very good penalty takers with amazing techniques. So I'm confident when either of them steps up. Even though we went 1-0 up though, the game was still very even for long parts of the first half. Rens credits them, they were a great team, they pressed well, they didn't give up especially when they went down to 10 men and they kept the game flowing for long periods. They did try to sit deep after they went down to 10 men which you can't blame them but even when they countered, they countered that very well and it was only for the lesser man that they didn't have more, more of a chance in that second half. Especially with the way that we were turning over the ball so much in that game. Jorginho, I do need to speak on his game because he was not progressive today. Passing's meant to be his bread and butter, but he's got his head down so many times. His passes are wayward, or they're mishit, or they're not reaching their target. And for someone of Jorginho's calibre, you expect a better passing accuracy from him, but it wasn't that good from him today. Kovacic as well, when he came on, I didn't think he was all that good. I thought he was good when he was under pressure, but other than that, he just seemed to peter through the game. He doesn't seem to be taking on as many players as, as often as you'd want to see. But other than that, I think the only issue was the midfield, and that started to become more of an issue towards the second half. I do still believe in Jorginho in the pivot against the pressing side, but he does need to improve his passing game because this is half the reason why Frank Lampard is still pushing for a DM, and that's why he wants to move for Declan Rice as quickly as he can in January because that's the final piece in our puzzle. We lack that natural DM who's tall, strong, and can actually string a good pass together as well. We don't have someone who's got all three of those attributes in one. We've got players that have one of those attributes or maybe two of those attributes. They ain't got all three, which is why we need someone of that sort of profile as our final piece in the puzzle. But second penalty came round towards the end of half time. 
a lot of people are going to sit there and complain about it, say that it was a bit harsh, and it might be a bit harsh, but that's the rules of UEFA, in it? Their rules are different to the FA. And when it comes to FA and VA, to UEFA and VAR, they're a lot more accurate than the FA ever could be, so I don't care too much. We've had so many poor VAR decisions go, up, go against us and hold us back in games. It's about time we had some good karma come back our way. Took them down to 10 men as well with the second yellow because it was two fouls or two penalties, so it was a red card, which basically killed the game off. And Chelsea went for the kill more and more in the second half. We were trying to find that third goal, but Tammy Abraham wasn't really being found with the crosses until Reese James found him around the 55th, 60th minute. It was an amazing delivery from him. I will say I thought the delivery was a lot better coming from the right-hand side compared to the left-hand side. Reese James had another great performance on the right-hand side, but I thought Luke um, Ben Chilwell was a bit iffy today. I don't think he was poor. I just don't think he was as effective as in, and as impactful as he was in other games. I do think his crossing could have had a bit, a bit of better, better accuracy as well. But I don't want to talk too negative on this game. This is, what, six clean sheets in our last seven now. We look so good defensively now. And I get that our transition looks a bit slower as a result of it. But it's because Frank Lampard doesn't have faith without that strong DM. So he's not fully confident inside yet. So once we get that DM inside again, maybe we'll be a bit more better going forward. But right now it's a case of we've got a balance between both of them. Which does mean we're a bit slower in transitions. But... It's fine. Whenever January comes, we should we should be looking to get Declan Rice. I think if we want him, we can go and get him. So we just got to wait and see on that. I'm going to go through the player reigns quick just before I end this video. I'm going to start off in goal. Edward Mendy, who had a very relaxed game, I will say. He had a very relaxed performance. I, don't, I think the second half was a lot easier for him because of the extra man on Chelsea's side. He had a very good save to make towards the end of the second half, but other than that, he was just catching crosses and just... It was just a calm performance from him, so I'm going to give him a 7. Reese James as well. Um, What should I say for Reese James? Probably go for an 8. I thought he was brilliant on that right-hand side. A lot of very good deliveries. It was only because of how many players that Renz had back. It was a bit of a struggle for him, but I thought he had a good performance. He was very solid defensively. He's a tank as well. He was bodying so many guys towards that second half. So yeah, 8 from him. Thiago Silva's going to get a 7. I think his passing range is just excellent. A um, couple good blocks as well. Had to come off early because Frank Lampard wants to give him a little rest before the Sheffield United game on Saturday. But it was a good performance from him, so I'm going to give him a 7. 7 for Kurt Zuma as well. A lot of very good blocks, especially when Thiago Silva came off. And I thought his long passing was good as well. Thiago Silva's really starting to rub off on this guy. So yeah, 7 for him. Ben Chilwell, I'm going to give a 6. Good defensively, but not as impactful going forward as we usually see from him. Again, correct me if you disagree down in the comment section below. But yeah, it's just the way I viewed it. Jorginho for awful passing. Yeah, just wasn't progressive again today. Good under pressure at least, but the passing left a lot to be desired. And that's something you don't usually say with him. So yeah, I'm going to give him a 4. Um, N'Golo Kante, going to give him a 6. I thought he was very good I thought he was very good in that centre midfield role. A lot of good interceptions from him. And progressed the ball excellently. So yeah, I'm going to give him a 6. Pushing 6.5 as well. Mason Mount, around the 6s as well. I thought he had a good performance. Not as good as the Burnley performance, but a good performance. Hakim Ziyech again causing chaos and that interchange between him and Reese James was causing a lot of problems. So he's going to get a 7-2. Same thing with Timo Werner. A lot of very good 1-2s with Ben Chilwell and Mason Mount on that left-hand side. Good link-up play with the players and the two penalties gives him a 7 for me. And Tammy Abraham, again, another 7. I thought he was finding a lot of space in the middle of that box. He wasn't being found for a while, but he stayed persistent and he got the goal to wrap it up. So yeah, excellent performance from him. Moving on to the subs, Emerson, again Alonso not picked for a match, he is definitely finished at this club after that West Brom game. But yeah, Emerson got caught slipping once, but other than that a solid performance, so I'm going to give him a 6. Rudiger didn't really do much, didn't really have time to do much, so yeah, just give him a 5.5. Kovacic, I thought he was good under pressure, but the final ball just left a lot to be desired, so I'm going to give him a 5. Hudson Doy had a one good chance for Olivier Drew, but it felt like another game where he just didn't seem at his most confident. So I'm going to give him another five. Olivier Drew as well. He hasn't done much with the minutes that he's had. 
Other than that, yeah, he didn't really have much other than that one chance made by Hudson Odoi, so it's going to be a five from him. But yeah, that is the end of our player ratings. I do just want to end it on this. Tammy Abraham didn't cost a penny. Mason Mount didn't cost a penny. Neither did Reese James or Hudson Adoy. But they've had a lot of impact in this side throughout the season. So, And they're going to continue to have a lot of impact as well. So that's just a stat I want to drop there as well. Because I'm very happy with the way you've been over the last few games. It's six clean sheets in our last seven. It's five clean sheets in a row ever imagine that being us but yeah like and subscribe let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below take care and up the chills